Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's to me, Yuki. Today I'm going to be talking about how I became a Christian because I posted a testimony video, but then it wasn't really. I deleted it because, yeah, a long time ago, maybe like in 2015. So now I'm going to be doing this one and it's going to be staying on this channel for forever. And yeah, it's a very long story, but I'm going to try and condense it as much as possible. So I grew up in Austin, Texas. I was born there in 95. And, um,. I had a pretty normal, a very normal, happy childhood, me and my twin brother, blah, 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 and everything was all good. And um, when I was young, there were people that were very close to me who were like different um, generations who were around me a lot of the time, and they were always arguing with each other. Like, they were pretty, I wouldn't, it was like in my own mind as a kid, like being like three, four, five, six. It was a very constant thing, and um, in my mind at that time, I thought that it was very, very disrespectful to, um, I didn't know the whole story, but I, all I heard and all I saw was like yelling a lot of times from these people, so I thought to myself, it's very disrespectful to disrespect an older person, regardless of what happened or whatever, and, blah, 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 and that's how I conceptualized it in my four, five, six-year-old mind. So I told myself, that I was not going to ever speak to like older people the way that I saw because to me it was extremely disrespectful and rude. And so as I got older, by the time I hit the fourth grade, I was a, a, like, it was elementary school, so you don't really think about how you're doing in school or whatever, but I had good grades until I hit the fourth grade. And when I was in the fourth grade, somehow in my math class, um, I got a, an F in my math class and it was like, at that time, the spirit of what re the spirit of rejection or the spirit of failure kind of fell into my life or was planted in my life in that way. And I know it may sound really, really like ridiculous, like to me you were like nine years old or whatever. But to me at that time, it was a very big deal. And um, people also around me were like, "Oh, but you know, in this family we get really great grades and da 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 da." So you know how that is. And so I was just like. I was kind of beating myself up about it, but then I told myself, like, I'll do better next time. And so, fast forward to about, like, almost two years, eight, okay, so when I turned 10, I was still living in Austin, but then in December of 2005, I, like, the year that I was 10, but, like, the next year I would have been turning 11 in 2000, December of 05, I moved from Austin, Texas to Worcester, Massachusetts. And if no one knows what Worcester is, and not Worcester Shire sauce or Worcester, how people pronounce it. Worcester is an hour outside of Boston, and it's the second largest city in Massachusetts, I believe. And um, so I moved to Worcester, Massachusetts, and literally my life did a complete 180 because um, the environment that I was in, it was very stressful at the time, and I was like very young, and a lot of the frustration was um being let out in very unhealthy ways what people would call like verbal abuse if you want to call it that and i'm not downplaying that at all you know what i mean but there are other people who would look at this and say no that's not the case but i know what the case was because i lived it and it would be like constant yelling constant shouting and very much like over emotionalism and it was just a very stressful living like that every day you know what i mean and it was something that was completely out of my control because i was so young at the time and it would be like the littlest things like i obviously missed my friends and i missed texas because that, that's all i knew growing up you know what i mean for the first 10 years of my life and at my new school i did know people and i was cool with people but i wasn't extremely close to people as i was in um message in texas sorry and in the sixth grade, it was better, but in the fifth grade, it was, like, kind of rough. And it would be, like, little things would have, like, these comments would be made that were just, that, like, I will never forget them for the rest of my life. And it's hard because in life, you always remember the bad things that people say to you. So, like, little things like me crying over my friends for, like, like oh, I miss them. Like, obviously, I'm 10 years old. But then it would be, like, these comments of like, oh, but 
you're crying over your friends or whatever, just get over it. What are you going to do when you have a boyfriend and he breaks up with you? Are you going to commit suicide because you don't have a boyfriend? And it would be, like, I'm 10 years old. Like, why would you say that to a 10-year-old? But those were the types of things that were said to me. And I, like, was just, like, I began to view crying as a form of weakness. Also, I went to church my whole life, so I believed in God. Like, I made the choice to get saved when I was fairly young, maybe, like, six or seven. I made the choice for myself to get saved. And when I was young... I did feel God's presence and I do believe that children are more in tune to like God and as we get older things of the world like really really distract us and we sin a lot more so then we get like more out of touch with God you know until anyways so that's when I was young I knew for a fact that God was real and I felt his presence but after I moved to Massachusetts like so many things would like unravel like we're unraveling and like school was so hard for me I was getting like B's I was getting like I would get Every grade that there was, I would get. So I would get like A's, B's, C's, and D's, and I was passing. But I would, it would be like, <laughs> it would be like, oh, like instead of saying, oh, well, do you need help? Do you need a tutor? It would be like, oh, you're so stupid. Why don't you understand this? Why can't you understand this? Such and such is doing better than you. I'm ten years old. Such and such is doing better than you. Blah 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 blah. Like, oh, you're an embarrassment. You're a disgrace to this family. Da da da. What's the point of you being alive? Because you can't get it right all these things are like being said to me and I'm just like what is like I I internalized all these things and thought that I was the problem you know and at that time I mean I would still go to church but then I would also like ask God like okay so you're real or whatever but these people that are around me that I know are so negative and so toxic and just so like degrading but they say these horrible things but then at the same time they come to church and they praise you but you're not doing anything about it how come you're not doing anything about it if i'm you're letting me go it was like one of those why are you letting me go through these situations and i can't it's not like i was 10 it's not like i could have like moved out or like ran away or whatever you know 10 11 years old so um but there were good times and i did find like f family friends of mine became really close to me and you guys know that i draw anime and those people that are the main characters of my anime are inspired by my friends in real life and we used to hang out literally all the time it was great um we have very great childhood memories together it was wonderful but also it was like a, it was a roller coaster because you know it's like you have these great high moments and you have these really low moments and um when I got to middle school in seventh grade, it was all right. Middle school was cool. I like. I actually enjoyed middle school, and um, but over the summer between seventh and eighth grade, I wanted to like explore myself because it would be like I was dressing in a way that like I I didn't like. I dressed like a normal kid, but I it's that I got into like rock music. And I, I've always actually, when I was growing up, Nickelback and like Avril Lavigne and like all these people were on the radio all the time and Simple Plan and all that kind of stuff. And I listened to that music on the radio and I liked it, but I wasn't like going out and searching for these, like it was kind of, I, you know, growing up in like 2002, 2003, that's before YouTube and all that kind of stuff, 2004, 2005. So I wasn't going out and like going to shows or anything like that because I was a kid. But by the time I hit 8th grade, it was 2008 to 2009, around there. So I was getting into like bands like Evanescence. Uh, I, a friend of mine at school introduced me to Flyleaf, so I was listening to them and all that kind of stuff. And there, I, I started dressing like, like an emo scene kid, as they call them. And that, that was the style. And I also loved Japan and Japanese music and like Japanese rock. And to me the emo scene kid style was kind of like a variation of stuff in Harajuku that I'd seen on the internet. So I was getting into that and I was just like a kid, like I was like 12, 13. But then I would get comments like, oh, you look stupid. Not from people at school, even though there are people at school who are like, why do you dress like that? Other kids dress like that too. So it was, it was fine. Like nobody, I was never like bullied in school, you know? Were there occasional arguments with other kids? Yeah, but was I bullied? No. But um, I had a pretty good school life, like I liked my friends, we were all cool with each other, everything was fine. But I would get comments like, oh you look stupid, why do you dress like that, you're bringing devils into my house by the way that you dress and this music that you listen to, whoop do whoop do blah 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 blah. So all that kind of stuff was really 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 weighing on me. And at that point I was, it was, all these things had piled up 
and like it was this constant like to me is the problem or to me is um like she's like this and like that and in my head it was just a lot they were like it was just it was really horrible and at the time i just got so frustrated and so fed up that i remember when i was 13 years old i was being yelled at about something and i don't remember what it was and i don't i'll never remember what it was because it was so stupid but i remember going into my room and i hurt myself for the first time and it just happened and it was one of those things that like i was i wasn't shocked or surprised or whatever but it was one of those things that it became a coping mechanism for me and at that point I didn't believe in God at all because I was just like well God abandoned me obviously because he doesn't care about what I'm going through or whatever mind you guys I'm 12 13 at this time so I was self-harming as a way to cope with the things that I was going through and the emotional pain that I was going through and at that time it did help and it was just one of those things where like the thing about it is that the things that help you outside of Christ only make you worse so all these things like oh you know i drink or do drugs or whatever to feel better like those things are only going to lead down a worse road so pretty much my freshman year for when i was 14 turning 15 by that time of freshman year of high school like i high school was also fine but it was just a lot of home life was my main has always been my main problem and all obviously what goes on in the, in the home reflects in everything else so like if you're suffering at home a lot of times you're going to be suffering in school and relationships friendships whatever all that kind of stuff so kids who act out at school it's because they're they're going through something in their house obviously but a lot of people don't like to hear that because they feel like oh you're blaming them or whatever the case may be when that's just facts it's a simple fact and um so my freshman year of high school i was just like up to here with literally everything and i'm a short person so i was literally up to here with everything and I wanted to commit suicide and like the demons of depression and anxiety that were tormenting me were like literally trying to get me to commit suicide. I picked the day out I was going to do it and all that kind of stuff. But on that same day it didn't happen and um, long story short, I, my family found out that I was self-harming and I had to, because the school found out and they told my family and I had to go to therapy or whatever. And therapy really did help me and people who are against therapy including Christians like I don't think that there's anything wrong with therapy I think that when people automatically just try to put you on pills that's not a good thing because that doesn't solve that's not gonna solve what's going on with you you need to figure out the root problem and deal with it and it's also very spiritual there's a lot of stuff whether it's generational curses or demonic things happening to you those are all legitimate things that are in your life so a few months later, in the month of May, I found out that Flyleaf was coming to Worcester and it was going to be my first concert and pretty much I went to go see them and at the end of the show, obviously Flyleaf was headlining and they had just released their album Memento Mori and um, Lacey said that no matter who you are or what you're going through or what you believe, God loves you and because he loves you you're gonna get out of whatever you're going through and I knew at that moment that that was true and that God was real and I realized that it was like a, it was like I was had a blindfold over my eyes and then the blindfold was taken off and I realized that God was real and that it was just as clear as day to me like I'm looking outside right now and the sky is blue and the trees are green and that's so obvious and it was just so obvious that God was real no matter what anybody said and like that he actually did love me and I knew that whatever it was that I had gone through wasn't because he had abandoned me. It was just because it was just what was happening at the time, but that God was always protecting me from all the things that it could have been worse. I could have been getting physically abused in my house. That wasn't happening. I could have been, I could have accidentally killed myself. That didn't happen. God was always there, always telling Satan, just like Job, like, you can do this, but you can't cross this line. So, and all these things happen. So anyways, at that time, I was like, God, you know, I know, like, I messed up, and like, God, I, I need your help, because I told him, I was like, yo, if you don't help me, I'm going to kill myself. So like, I need your help. And at that moment, in that arena, at the Worcester Palladium, I felt the presence of God come down from heaven and come into my heart. And it's true when the Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I knew at that moment that Jesus was legit and I got saved that night. And like I woke up the next day 
not feeling alone for the first time since 2005 and then this was what five years later and I was like whoa like God is really for real and um, that's the short version of how I became a Christian <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah that's the short version of how I became a Christian and I just it was, it was beautiful and like now I'm here seven years later Eight, eight years later, it's 2017, and I am here now, and yeah, I'm here seven years later, and like, I love Jesus, and He loves me, and like, I realized that all these things happened to build me up, and when, when God, not everything that happens to you, I don't believe everything that happens to you is God's will, because God only has a perfect plan for you, but obviously we live in a fallen world, and he li we live in a world where unfortunately people close to you do hurt you, and people close to you are mean to you and the thing is, is that he's always there to guide you and help you and be gracious to those people and be forgiving and loving to those people when they're not forgiving and they're hurting too i'm not justifying abuse or any of that in any way but i'm saying that hurting people hurt people and if these people hadn't been hurt by other people they wouldn't be hurting you and the reason why they're hurting you is because you can't fight back and they they're being a bully but at the end of the day like they're gonna get what's coming to them because i mean i'm not like oh karma i don't believe in karma i believe that god fights your battles and god does pour out his wrath on the unrepentant and like that's just how it is and god gives you chance after chance after chance to be like wow the way that i'm treating this person is messed up but if you don't repent like god is going to deal with it whether it's in this life or the next life and when you die he's going to show you every single time whoever the people were that hurt me God is going to show them each and every single thing that they've done and said and how it affected me. And like, that's what gives me comfort. And I like, I love these people. Like, I love them and I forgive them and I don't have anything against them. And I understand that they're the way they are because of something that happened to them and that's just how it is. But I'm so glad that God used all these things to show me that he's always been right there. And, um, wow, I'm really surprised that I was able to condense the story because it's literally so long like the if you heard the extended version would be here for like the next 10 years literally but um guys that was my short version of how i became a christian and if you want to know everything that happened to me after i became a christian because then after that my life changed completely <laughs> of course also so if you want to know the, if you want to know the after story let me know here in the comments and you're not alone and jesus is real and he's the God of this world. I'm gonna talk about that, how I knew that Jesus was the God of this world. Like, the real God, the one true God, because you can say, oh, God is real, but who, Buddha, who, Allah, who? Like, I'm gonna talk about that if you guys want me to. And um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Have a great one. God bless you guys, and good night, good morning, wherever you are. Bye.